before we discussed about uh, you know few things we already discussed about anemias am i correct various types of anemias we saw then we discussed about you already know i suppose okay absolute and normal values in hematology please don't forget normal values in hematology okay i'm telling again okay, please and uh, uh, other things in unit 1 are neutrophil abnormalities then we have other topics like uh, uh, leukemia then we have uh, one more bone marrow aspiration okay see i uh, as i already stated i have given weightage of anemias around 70% from unit 1 is dedicated to anemias it looks like we already stated in the third semester it looks like we stated in the first second but still anemias is a big deal i will tell you why for uh, for example whenever you are doing any lab test the first test they will do will be a cbc am i correct irrespective of the condition whether it's a micro infection or anything bio issue uh, chemistry issues or anything first we are doing cbc why they are doing cbc first we need to know whether patient has proper blood or not is he anemic the investigation starts with cbc have you observed this one even if we suspected patient has some malaria first we won't give malaria test we will say cbc first do the cbc then i will do rest of the things from cbc you know when it came the results i will take serum i will go for biochemistry or any other test it starts with cbc am i correct so why cbc is so important cbc comprises of rbc count and a white blood cell count platelet count along with hemoglobin values if you go you also have dlc values am i correct right then we can derive some other parameters with these uh, values uh, such as uh, you know we can parallelly perform pcv esr can be performed uh, and also indices we are going with the indices indirect calculations of these values am i correct those include mcv mch mchc ri and rtw do you remember what is rtw red cell distribution grid what is the significance of rtw to identify any shape abnormalities of the uh, shape and size uh, okay uh, shape abnormalities of the rbc maybe sickle cell target cell spherocytosis many things are there is there any more test in cbc yeah there are uh, two more tests actually very very important as we are seeing reticulocyte count so this is also very very important so i was trying to show the abundant or least appreciated test in cbc that is the reticulocyte count usually we won't mind reticulocyte count right but it plays a vital role in understanding anemia so all these things are done to know anemia right yeah please keep your mobiles quiet okay uh, silent so yes uh apart from this sometimes we are showing some of the dlc values as absolute values or a, a, a special test like a absolute is no fail count okay in a rare uh, circumstances we can also proceed with absolute is no fail count so this we are preferring when there is a suspected uh, 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 allergic or parasitic infection in the body okay because we know that is no fails are attributed to the parasite infection so what are the common blood parasites we have malaria leishmania uh, okay even viral uh, dengue or uh, dengue okay all these things can be determined by these things right all right so this is finalized and uh, the no, not so common test will be uh, btct not so common but we will do when we go further investigations we might go with btct but primarily we will So assess these values first, right? We are assessing these values first, and there is a significance to understand anemia. This is clear, right? So when I admitted my son uh, for you know a basic problem, went to PJ. The first thing they did is they took his blood sample. The first thing they did is CBC. Let me see the Michael CBC. So it's just nine months. They took CBC and they started going for next things. Okay. First they are seeing whether CBC is normal or not. is the kid in how normal uh, condition or 
anemic condition. If there is an anemia, there is a dangerous condition, I will tell, in case of uh, a simple diagnosis, in case of kids, if they have an anemia, there are multiple reasons. One of the dangerous reasons, which I don't want to state, you know, I'm afraid of this, is Fanconi's anemia. Fanconi anemia. A very, very, very dangerous, lethal thing. It, it looks like, uh, you know, Fanconi anemia have a, a, a symptoms like a delayed developmental growth. Babies don't show proper milestones. They look like, you know, uh, they should start uh, uh, giving some gestures, but they won't give gestures. That means they have some milestone delay. So, uh, this looks like a normal milestone delay. When we do the CBC, I got an anemic condition in a baby. One of the reasons of anemia might be a Fanconi syndrome. So, what is Fanconi syndrome? In Fanconi syndrome, gradually the bone marrow will start, you know, depleting. Bone marrow will gradually decrease its activity. At one stage, by the age of 30 or 40, they will die. Because their bone marrow cannot produce any more blood vessels. Game over. So, okay, you think that they will be happy up to 30. Never. Slowly, they are undergoing the dynamic stages. Not only are these issues, finally there are platelet issues, finally there are WBC issues. When there is a WBC issue, uh, the kids will expose to more infections. When a faculty kid is sitting in this classroom, none of you will get infection, but another simple infection can kill this kid. Okay, I mean, that easy to kill them because their WBCs uh, are very less. Okay, so Fanconi syndrome is very dangerous. Then I will give another interesting cases of uh, anemia, CBC and these things. Another interesting thing, you have seen these things in the old movies, you know, black and white movies. In the movie, suddenly, you know, there will be a dramatic uh, uh, scene where the hero or heroine will start coughing, okay? Uh, they will get blood on their kerchief or they will get, you know, they will start uh, bleeding from the nose. And suddenly they will go to hospital and now there will be a you know, sad music. Uh, sorry, you are uh, you having cancer. <laughs> okay, now the rest of the movie will be focusing on this problem. Okay, okay, he will cry all things. Okay, love issues. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, bleeding from the nose or blood from cough. Okay, it looks simple. Okay. Our uh, uh, hero coughed and there is a blood. And that's it over. Okay, you got cancer. Dead. Dead. Is it? No, uh, no, listen. Don't worry. Not all bleedings are cancers. Not all cough to blood will be a cancer. But one of the symptoms is related to cancer. Okay? I will give you one example. Maybe in this patient, Due to some alcohol, due to some epigenetic factors, not genetic, okay? Some exposed to things, x-rays, UV or anything. Patient bone marrow, okay? Patient bone marrow slowly reducing its activity, okay? RBCs are reduced, WBCs are reduced and platelets are reduced. Let us see platelets mediated issue. When there are less platelets in the body, what happens? There will be less you know, arrest of bleeding. Even simple hit to them will start bleeding because their platelets are less, their tiny capillaries are ruptured and they will start bleeding. No, why? A healthy patient showing thrombocytopenia. A healthy patient, keep in mind. If the patient has some uh, viral attack, he will show obviously symptoms of viral, right? Uh, you know, laziness, uh, feverish, but he looking healthy, but he is getting bleeding from the nose. Maybe his bone marrow slowly depleting. Maybe he have some uh, uh, bone marrow, uh, you know, failure, bone marrow failure. And complete bone marrow failure is called as what? Bone marrow failure is called as what? Aplastic anemia. anemia. So now you understood aplastic anemia. What is aplastic anemia? Bone marrow failure is called as aplastic anemia. Right? So, now I am giving you uh, two uh, uh, views of this anemia. One is, anemia can be a dangerous cancer. Anemia, you know, anemia can cause a cancer. 
Okay. Some of anemias might be a cancers. See, sir, simply a CBC giving uh, tell tell clues of cancers. Is it clear? So that is the significance of hematology compared to other subjects. So I was trying to exaggerate my own subject. Anyway, clear, right? So hematology plays a paramount of uh, uh, importance in diagnosing the patient issues, especially concerned with the uh, uh, cancers. Blood cancers. Okay, so there are multiple types of cancers. There are WBC cancers are called leukemias. There are types of leukemias that we have a dedicated chapter there I will discuss. I will focus uh, uh, on a different aspects of anemia now. Let us re check what is anemia again. Okay, uh, not what. Uh, why patient has anemia? Why patient has anemia? Okay, there are many reasons of getting anemia. Am I correct? So I did a CBC test and I came to know patient has anemic condition. Some of things are less. In the HBW, RBC, some things are less. So patient has an anemia. We understood. I got a patient, I did CBC and I came to know patient has anemia. Now my next question is, I diagnosed, I got anemia. My next question, what is the reason? What causing anemia in the patient? Okay, there might be two broad issues. There will be two broad issues. Let me tell you. Those broad issues are maybe patient red blood cells, patient red blood cells are destroyed by some external thing. Some external factor destroying patient red blood cells. Such anemia is called as hemolytic hemolytic anemia. Some external factors destroying red blood cells leading to anemia in my patient. Is it clear? Some external factors are destroying my cells, patient cells, causing anemia. What might be the external factors? Can you tell me examples of external factors that are killing the uh, uh, RBCs? Something not involved in our body. Okay? Maybe malaria. Maybe patient got malaria. Malaria by a parasite destroying RBCs leading to a hemolysis. Or patient might have typhoid. That means some microbes are doing this one. Or as our Shubham said, some abnormal antibodies, autoantibodies are destroying the red blood cells. Any other reasons? Huh? Some, uh, some treatments, some drugs. The patient uh, taking some drugs and these drugs are interfering with RBCs and they might destroy you. For example, uh, I saw quinoquines, okay, there uh, I, I erased it. Quinoquines are the class of drugs that are used to treat uh, uh, malaria. Okay, quinoquines will destroy the RBCs. Why they are the, these drugs are destroying RBCs? Because our parasite resides inside an RBC. Malarial parasite present inside an RBC. So this tablet will destroy RBC membrane first before destroying the parasite. So some drugs can induce hemolysis. Any other reasons of uh, external things? Diet. Okay, vitamin B12 deficiency. These things might cause anemia. Okay, this is one reason of getting anemia. And what is the second reason? Okay, internal issues. So, so far I discussed about external factors. External factors are treatable, keep in mind. All external factors, if we can know it is an external issue, that is it to treat the patient. Give some tablets, reduce the drug treatment, identify the issue, treat it, it will be uh, resolved. Resolving and external issues is easy. Now, let us see other aspects of anemia that are internal issues. Internal issues causing an anemia. Internal issues causing an anemia. Okay. One, bone marrow not producing enough red blood cells. Maybe bone marrow has some cancer. 
This is one internal reason. Any more internal reasons? Obviously, primary reason will be bone marrow. Bone marrow not produced in cells. Second reasons? Yeah. Erythropoietin. The kidney suprarenal gland will produce erythropoietin. So, there is some endocrine issue. Erythropoietin not released in the patient. So, the bone marrow unable to produce cells. It is not issue with bone marrow. Rather than it is an issue with the suprarenal gland of the kidney. Leading to an anemia. That is second internal issue. Other things might be, uh, uh, you know, uh, splenic issues. Okay, splenic issues. More splenic issues. There are thyroid issues. T three, T four are very important for metabolic activity. That there might be some three T three, T four, T S H issues leads to an anemia, hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism can cause anemia. Okay, so these are some internal issues. Okay, now we need to know what is the issue of the patient causing cancer, uh, anemia. Is it an internal issue? Is it an external issue? Or simply, is it a hemolytic anemia or non-hemolytic anemia? Now you understood, right? These are non-hemolytic anemias. There is no destruction of RBC cells. Rather than there is a problem with the production of RBC cells. Internal issues are related to productional issues, whereas external is related to destruction issues. Okay, hemolytic, non-hemolytic. Okay, now you understood, right? Why we given that classification, hemolytic anemias, non-hemolytic anemias. Now clear, right? Sir, what is the yes, sir. Huh? Should be Kesho Kushi Shubham. Please meet her, HOD ma'am. Muskan. Should be uh, what do you want to class? Okay, you can go. Should be Kesho Kushi Shubham and Muskan. You can go to. Uh, there is a. Uh, you will understand. See our selection actually. You, they are discussing this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Close the Class. Okay, okay, class point. Class point. What is production and Okay. See, bone marrow producing cells, right? When bone marrow does not produce cells, when there is no erythropoietin, erythropoietin is important for bone marrow, you know, cell, uh, an important cofactor for erythropoiesis. Since there is no erythropoietin, production will be reduced by bone marrow. Okay. Similarly, uh, spleen issue. Okay. Uh, actually, splenic issue should be uh, focused here. You know, when there is an issue with spleen, that will cause hemolysis. Actually, splenic issues will be a hemolytic issues. Okay. When there is an issue with uh, making of a cell, that is non-hemolytic. When there is an issue with the destruction of a cell, that will be a hemolytic. Okay, hemolytic, non hemolytic. Is it clear so far? Ah. Yes, sir. Yes, that's what. Why my bone marrow not producing blood? Listen. My thing is, in internal factors, bone marrow is fine, but it's not producing cells. Maybe the cell production erythropoietin, which is there in the kidney, not given to the bone marrow. Erythropoietin not received to the bone marrow, so bone marrow unable to produce a cell. What my point? These are internal. Okay? Here, bone marrow is fine, but the, the problem is from the kidney now. Okay? This is my next question. Is everything clear so far? Is everything understood? Yes. Any confusions? Unless you are paying attention, this looks tough. Unless you are paying attention. So, pay attention, okay? Now listen. Now. The third criteria I was focusing is how my... Uh, Response of my bone marrow. 
response of bone marrow. How bone marrow responding to an anemia? How bone marrow responding to uh, Avinash? Pay attention Avinash. Okay. How my bone marrow responding to an anemia? Okay, that is also very very important. Listen, if these are the issues, if there is an issue with erythropoietin, I will give erythropoietin whether my bone marrow producing or not. Okay. So now I am going to write here. Response of my bone marrow. Is there an appropriate response? Appropriate response? Is, or is there an inappropriate response to anemia? What is this appropriate response and inappropriate response by the bone marrow to the anemia? Now if you understand, listen, usually what happens when there is an excessive, okay, uh, I will tell you, for example, 100 cells should be there in the circulation, 100 cells should be there in the circulation, what happened, I got hemolytic anemia, so my cells has been reduced to 40, <coughs> some malaria parasite, destroyed by RBC cells leading to hemolytic anemia so my blood cells are 40 right what my bone marrow will do to this issue now both the bone marrow will produce 60 RBCs to maintain the 100 the normal value 100 now my bone marrow responded by producing 60 RBCs to maintain the normal red blood cells in the circulation. This is the normal response of bone marrow. Okay. Now, whenever the bone marrow treat, you, now listen, I forgot to tell one more parameter. Usually bone marrow will produce only 20 cells per minute. The normal rate of production is 20 cells. But due to a hemolysis, bone marrow hyper responded to maintain that equilibrium. Okay, rather than 20 cells, now it reduced to 60 cells to re, you know, to compensate the anemia. Got it? During this stress, now bone marrow is under stress. Rather than producing 20 cells, now it is producing 40 more cells, you know, overall 60 cell production. Because of this hyper uh, activity of bone marrow, there is a chance of releasing some of the Immature cells into the circulation. Immature RBCs. What are those immature RBCs? Reticulocytes. Okay. The normal reticulocyte count in the circulation will be 0.5 to 2.5. During an anemia, the reticulocyte count must be increased. It must be increased, you know, maybe 1, 2, 3 or up to 6. This is a good response of bone marrow. During a good response, what happens? Bone marrow producing more cells and that, that more cells can be detected by checking the reticular sites in the circulation. Is this concept clear? Yes, sir. Now, let us see a different approach, different problem. There is an ongoing destruction and my bone marrow not producing cells. It is still producing that same 20 cells rather than 60. Is that a good signature? It's not a good sign. Right? Bone marrow is not responding. Why my bone marrow is not responding? Got it? Here I can understand why it is not responding. Here I will try with my triggers first. I will take my triggers. The triggers are erythropoietin, T3, T4, and uh, uh, some more triggers. Huh? Oh, that we'll see. Uh, that is not a trigger. So I will try to give erythropoietin to my patient. Patient not producing and uh, cells. I give an erythropoietin injection and I saw whether the bone marrow responded or not. It didn't respond. It. That means there is no issue with erythropoietin or this. There is a direct issue with the bone marrow now. Maybe bone marrow has cancer now. Very, very dangerous. Very sad. Okay. Maybe bone marrow has a cancer. Game over if we rule out. 
then we will try to understand the cancer with the next stage of the test that is a different story now you understood right so far is this concept clear response of bone marrow is it responding properly or inappropriately appropriate or inappropriately quite pushy okay if it's not responding properly i will give trigger stimulations okay erythropoietin okay. these things and i will check whether it's responding or not still not responding cancer this is one thing okay now another thing we need to consider the other thing is simply i cannot say response uh no i need to attribute the response with the stage of anemia with the degree degree of anemia listen rather than 60 cells there is a 80 cell destruction and i was expecting a uh you know a normal say a uh, 20 response or a 60 response when there is a more destruction i need more response by the bone marrow that means my bone marrow must respond to the level of anemia simply it is responding doesn't mean it's a good uh, bone marrow got my point it, it is responding but that response is slow not to the degree of uh, anemic condition okay that is my third criteria is my bone marrow responding to the degree of my anemia when there is a 60 destruction is my bone marrow producing 60 cells <laughs> simply producing 20 or 30 cells is not sufficient here 20 or 40 cells is not sufficient that i cannot say bone marrow is fine he is my bone marrow capable of you know uh, uh, treating the anemia i need to cross compare with the degree of anemia with my bone marrow activity got my point how we will know that how we will know whether my bone marrow producing sufficient cells so, uh, you know adequate to the ongoing destruction in the body that i need to address first how we will do it the normal response of bone marrow can be understood by reticulocyte count or this is also called absolute reticulocyte count so first we will understand what is absolute reticulocyte count then we will understand the uh, important thing uh, that is that is uh, i will i got there wait this is called as reticulocyte production index reticulocyte production index is my reticulocytes or bone marrow producing sufficient cells to the degree of anemia that is called as reticulocyte production index okay this is the true reticulocyte count got my point here when i say reticulocyte that means that is bone marrow only when reticulocytes are released when the bone marrow is working properly is everything clear so far reticulocytes are directly proportional to bone marrow activity more reticulocytes more production of cells by the bone marrow less reticulocytes less production of cells by the bone marrow got it reticulocytes are immature red blood cells reticulocytes means immature red blood cells why there is leakage of immature red blood cells that's a natural phenomenon when there is more production more cells might escape into circulation that's it okay now let us see a normal reticulocyte count write down normal reticulocyte count what is the normal reticulocyte count 0.5 to 2.5 percentage when we say percentage we are trying to correlate with two different population how many cells for this many cells that is percentage right so let us see what is the calculation of percentage okay reticulocyte percentage is equal to number of reticulocytes counted by yes total number of red blood cells for how many red blood cells how many reticulocytes are present okay let us assume for 2000 red blood cells there are 50 reticulocytes number of reticulocytes rct reticulocyte count divided by total number of red blood cells in 200 this is normal reticulocyte count 
Is it clear? Pay attention, very very important topic. You will get this question in the exam. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, for example, you identified 50 reticulocytes and your RBC are 2000. So, the, uh, the percentage will be uh, into 100. Then if you do this calculation, that is 2.5 percentage. That means normal reticulocyte count. This is how we got the normal values. 0 to 0 0.5 to 2.5 percentage. That I will discuss. First you understand normal reticulocyte count. Okay? That is what I am saying. A normal reticulocyte count doesn't state a good bone marrow response. I need to check this with the ongoing anemia in the patient. Got my point? He is my bone marrow producing it. You know, sometimes even I need 7 value. I need 7 value for a very severe anemia. How can I correlate my value with the, the ongoing destruction? That will be the actual bone marrow response. Got my point? To the degree of anemia, if it is a severe anemia, the red blood cell count is only 2 million. Okay, very very severe. You will die actually with 2 million. Is my bone marrow producing 3 million cells now? It is still producing only 2.5. That is not a normal condition. Just you got a normal 2.5 value in a reticulocyte count doesn't mean a normal response. When we compare with the ongoing destruction, when we see a lethal anemia with 2 million cells and my bone marrow only producing normal value of reticulocytes, 2.5, that is not a good response by the bone marrow. It should produce some 7 to 8 reticulocytes, percentage of reticulocytes to compensate the lethal anemia. <laughs> How to confirm that? How to confirm a lethal anemia with the ongoing response? How to calculate it? That is my reticulocyte production index. How many reticulocytes are produced during that particular time, that particular anemic condition? That I will focus now. Reticulocyte production index. How to calculate it? Okay. Uh, write down the Definition of reticulocyte count first. Definition of reticulocytes. Write down. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells produced by the bone marrow. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells produced by the bone marrow. The normal reticulocyte count is the normal reticulocyte count is 0 0.5 to 2.5. Normal reticulocyte count is 0.5 to 2.5. Uh, next point. The rate of production of reticulocytes. The rate of production of reticulocytes is a signature of is a signature of ongoing hemolysis in the body. Is a signature of ongoing hemolysis in the body. Next point. During hemolysis, during hemolysis, there is an excessive destruction of red blood cells. During archid, quite during hemolysis, there is an excessive destruction of red blood cells. There is an excessive destruction of red blood cells. So the bone marrow will produce. So the bone marrow produce more red blood cells. that have a further consequences of releasing more that have a further consequences of releasing that have the further consequences of releasing the further consequences of releasing immature red blood cells immature red blood cells within the bracket reticulocytes into the circulation immature red blood cells within the bracket reticulocytes into the circulation Causes release of immature red blood cells within the bracket reticulocytes into the circulation. Okay, this can be identified by absolute reticulocyte count. This can be identified by absolute reticulocyte count. And write down the formula. 
reticulocyte percentage is equal to number of reticulocytes uh, counted divided by total number of red blood cells into 100 into 100 that will give you the normal reticulocyte count is it clear yes. but now you understood my problem also right a normal value yes uh, okay sit there see you missed the major part of this class anyway don't talk now okay please don't talk okay, don't talk also. okay. Uh, now what is rpi reticulocyte production in index what is uh, what is the significance of rpi tell me students Yes, write down. Write down the definition of reticulocyte production of production index. Reticulocyte production index. This is an accurate measurement of reticulocyte production index is an accurate measurement of reticulocyte production index is an accurate measurement of RBC produced by bone marrow. RBC produced by bone marrow compared to compared to reticulocyte count compared to reticulocyte count during a uh, you know don't write during adjusting it to the adjusting it to the adjusting it to the Degree of severity of the anemia. Degree of severity of ongoing anemia. Degree of severity of ongoing anemia. You understood, right? So, Shukbir and the new students, listen. What I'm trying to say is, uh, I was stating the bone marrow response. Okay, bone marrow response to an anemia. When there is a hemolysis, okay, bone marrow will produce more cells. So when there are more cells, more reticulocytes will be detected in the circulation. So when we find more reticulocytes during an anemia, that indicates bone marrow is fine. Okay. Now another response, bone marrow not producing sufficient reticulocytes. That might be two reasons. One reason, there might be erythropoietin issue or hormonal issue or second one, it might be a cancer. That is the second scenario. Inappropriate response can be a cancer or a hormonal issue. Then third one. My third problem is just because bone marrow producing normal reticulocytes doesn't mean it's a normal condition. We need to compare that with the anemia first. Listen, anemia is a severe anemia. And bone marrow producing only 2.5 reticulocytes, that is not sufficient. Bone marrow must produce 7 reticulo, 7 percentage of reticulocytes. Is my bone marrow producing sufficient reticulocytes with the ongoing anemia or not? With the severity of the anemia? Who will give that proper value? To understand that value, we need to have a, another test that is reticulocyte production index. This will give the on you know anemic status with the bone marrow response. You already know the definition of RPA, right? So far, is it clear? Yes. Now, you know the definition and you know the normal uh, reticulocyte count. Let us see how to derive this one. How to calculate reticulocyte production index? Write down. It has three stages. Okay. The production of reticulocyte count will be done by three uh, things. First of all. First of all, we need to calculate the corrected reticulocyte count. We need to calculate the class. Those who are talking, you know, you will be in my data. You will be celebrities in my red list. You know, right? I'm maintaining a you know live performance sheet. If I feel you are not good, that's it. The next minute I will update there in the laptop. Game over. Oh yeah. Cal First, we need to calculate the Corrected reticulocyte count. Corrected reticulocyte count. See, now there is an adjustment to the formula actually. The normal formula is RB, uh, reticulocyte counted by uh, RBC counted into 100. But we are using a new formula that I will discuss later. 
Okay, so we are going to yes, yes, sir. Corrected reticulocyte count R is RCT count. Okay, the approach of getting uh, you know reticulocyte production index will be first we need to calculate corrected reticulocyte count, then second one. We will compare it with maturation correction. We will do something on maturation correction. Maturation correction factor. So we need to calculate the maturation correction factor. We need to calculate the maturation correction factor. Then third step. The third step will be calculation of reticulocyte production index. So before calculating reticulation, uh, reticulocyte production index, we need to calculate the corrected formula and we need to calculate the maturation factor. Then we will derive the RPI value. How we are deriving the RPI value on these two, I will discuss in the tomorrow's lecture. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, please go through this lecture once. Please go through the material and understand the concept uh, for tomorrow's lecture. Okay. Yeah. So I was trying to discuss these things. These things I will discuss tomorrow.